All right, so well, we're starting another section in the workbook here. Another lesson for us to explore. Yeah, a very interesting one. What is salvation? What is salvation? So we can read that and let that sink in, what that really is. Because we know we want it, but we need to know what it is. What is salvation? Salvation is a promise made by God that you would find your way to him at last. It cannot but be kept. It guarantees the time will have an end and all the, th all the thoughts that have been born in time will end as well. God's word is given every mind which thinks that it ha has separate thoughts and will replace these thoughts of conflict with the thought of peace. The thought of peace was given to God's son the instant that his mind had thought of war. There was no need for such a thought before, for peace was given without opposite and merely was. But when the mind is split, there is a need of healing. So the thought that has the power to heal the split became a part of every fragment of the mind that still was one, but failed to recognize its oneness. Now it did not know itself and thought its own identity was lost. Salvation is undoing in the sense that it does nothing, failing to support the world of dreams and malice. Thus, it lets illusions go. By not supporting them, it merely lets them quietly go down to dust. <clears throat> and what... <clears throat> <clears throat> and what they hid is now revealed, an altar to the holy name of God, whereon his word is written with the gifts of your forgiveness laid before it, and the memory of God not far behind. Let us come daily to this holy place and spend a while together. Here we share our final dream. It is a dream in which there is no sorrow withholds a hint of all the glory given us by God. The grass is pushing through the soil. The trees are budding now, and birds have come to live within their branches. Earth is, be Earth is being born again in new perspective. Night has gone, and we have come together in the light. From here, we give salvation to the world. For it is here salvation was received. The song of our rejoicing is the call to all the world that freedom is returned, that time is almost over, and God's Son has but an instant more to wait until his Father is remembered. Dreams are done, eternity has shined away the world, and only heaven now exists at all. Oh, that is what salvation is. <laughs> it sounds so wonderful. <laughs> so therefore we want to practice the lesson 231. Father, I will but to remember you. I will but to remember you. What can I seek for, Father, but your love? Perhaps I think I seek for something else something I have called by many names. Yet is your love the only thing I seek or ever sought? For there is nothing else that I could ever really want to find. Let me remember you. What else could I desire but the truth about myself? Mm. Yeah, join in that thought. What else could I desire? But the truth about myself. 
This is your will, my brother. And you share this with me and with the one as well who is our father. To remember him is heaven. This we seek. And only this is what it will be given us to find. Only this is what it will be given us to find. You do not need to seek anything else. This is your will. Remember God is heaven, this we seek. So we'll take a moment now to realize that this is what we seek. Whatever we think we seek, this is still the only thing we actually seek is to know God.
So they've been seeking for many things, call it many names, but all along, it was only God's love that we sought. And everything we did and everything we wanted, everything we thought, sought. It was God's love that we were desiring. And still desire. Whatever you think you must do, it's God's love that you want. Just seeking it in the wrong place, the wrong thing, the wrong place. It's not there. It's not in the things of the world. It's closer. It's nearer. We can just acknowledge that desire for God. Allow it. As, as we go through all the shoulds and musts and woulds, We can allow the desire, the truth, the God's love, that's how we open up to salvation. Salvation is the way to God. Let's come daily to this holy place and spend a while together. Here we share our final dream. It's a dream where there is no sorrow, for it holds a hint of all the glory given us by God. 
just come daily to this holy place and spend a while together. The world will shift. It will become bright and smooth as the east to flow. Just to spend a while together, together with spirit. So poetic, we become poets <laughs> as we give ourselves to salvation, as we experience the undoing of the little things of the world. The grass is pushing through the soil, the trees are budding now, the birds have come to live within their branches. Earth is being born again in new perspective. Night has gone, and we have come together in the light. We have the sound of the water and the little bird bathing in the water. Mm. So happy perspective <laughs> is there anything standing in the way that anyone would like to put on the altar this morning anything that blocks forgiveness ease Anything you'd like to express or expose? I don't know. Yeah, what's coming to me right now is this confusion um, because um, this this was. Um, Sting that I had a few days ago is getting worse and worse. And I heard, and Matthew said, maybe you need to look at it. And this morning I heard it needs looking at. And what I'm getting in touch with is this thing I shared yesterday, like, I don't care. I don't really care what happens to me. But it's it's this, this, this is a, like level confusion. It's, it's like, making the body real and then I don't care about it instead of I mean I don't know it's there's confusion there it's like go it's like oscillating between God and and the body like uh, between accepting God and his love and between being the body I don't know what it is or I just wanted to start talking about it so it gets clear in my mind it's just confused yeah. Confusion, this confusion, yeah, that's what come, what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a forgiveness opportunity. Like anything, if you hit your knee and you walk, you hit something and you, it hurts, or you get stung by a wasp, or you get cancer, or you just slide on the ice and fall and hit something like those are forgiveness opportunities it's to the extent that you feel affected by them to that extent you actually already believe you are this 
you are this body you this is your identity and so they are just actually beautiful forgiveness opportunities to not ignore, to not be angry at, but but to say, okay, I, I feel this, I feel pain here. Spirit, be with me as I acknowledge my belief in the body and I want to release this belief that I am this body. Yeah, I think I know what the, the ego trick there is, is by denying the pain, it makes the body real. By denying I have, I perceive I have a problem, some poison or something, and then I deny it in my mind, it's covered with I don't care, whatever. I think that's the de denying the pain has been the ego's, denying suppressing the pain has been the ego's way mm -hmm. of keeping me in this limbo between heaven and earth, yeah, God and body or real and unreal. Yeah, it's been like this for like such a long time. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's not, you know, that it's not a helpful denial. That can be helpful denial too, if you, mm -hmm. if you have peace. Mm -hmm. But if there is like anger or frustration included, then it's not, it's not really a denial. It's, it's a covering over or pushing down something. Yeah. So it could be helpful to not deny to say, "Oh, I have, you know, I I have some feelings here. I have some pain or disturbance." It could be if you have been denying a lot, it can be helpful to acknowledge it, to pray about what what would be helpful. How can I be gentle and supportive to myself here? I see what that might be. You know, magic, some magic can be very, very healing and helpful if we use it for gentleness, for the purpose of healing. Mm. That's yeah. why Jesus is describing magic, a mix of magic and miracles. Yeah. It's exactly. better than ignoring, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not dealing with it, keeps me uncertain about what's real, what's not, what happened, what didn't. It just keeps this uncertainty, yeah, and feelings of unreality. Actually, even Jesus talks about that in the course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I think there is a lot of unworthiness and self-denial behind such denial behind denying pain in the body, like ignoring pain in the body without letting it go. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, almost self-destructive. It's almost, yeah, it's a trap where you get stuck in. Um, so, yeah, I think gentle observance, observing, it and then, yeah, if there is a guidance or inspiration to take action or something that is that can open doors to more healing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good and it makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We don't want to do this unfortunate denial of of the body <laughs> while we still believe in it. You know. Yeah. And I feel it's often about relationships. We were guided to a guy was guided to go to the eye doctor, you know, and uh, had this. The eye doctor really needed to talk. She just talked to me about her problems. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was very, very sweet. I just feel such love for her. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. I love you guys. Thank you.